Hello friends, Tanya here with another Spellbinders video and today we are focusing on Fair Winds and Spotlight Collections. Both of these came out in June. The Fair Winds is by uh, Don Walschlager, Walschlagel, hmm. and the Spotlights uh, Collection is by Lisa Horton. We're going to use several, several components from both of these. I'm going to start out with a panel of cardstock that I ink blended with tumbled glass. And the size doesn't matter as long as you're going to be able to do this circle spotlight better press plate from the Lisa, Lisa Horton collection. I'm going to use teal topaz and cruise uh, better press inks here. We'll start with the darker towards the top of this uh, plate, which has the smaller or thinner um, lines I think and then the cruise on the bottom and I did use a cloth there to soften the edge between the teal topaz and the cruise colors and we'll just run that through our embossing folder or excuse me our die cut machine and I did not use watercolor paper here it's just a uh, plain 80 pound white cardstock because I'm just looking to get the uh, the the stamping effect here. I love this beautiful gradient effect. It very much reminds me of all of the, uh, this is going to date me, um, the Miami, um, oh golly, that, it was a show in the 80s, Miami Vice, there we go, the Miami Vice graphic <laughs> design. Um, so we're going to use one of these dies from the uh, Spotlight collection and I used a piece of cardstock that I just sopped up all of this Distress Mica stain sprays from the bottom of the box that I use for that. That's my spray box versus spatter box. It's just an old box from one of the Spellbinders kits and I've used the same box for a long time. There is a lot of Distress Mica stain spray in the bottom of that and I had just moistened that with some water and spritzed uh, and laid a piece of cardstock on that. That was a long time ago. This has been in my stash. So I'm going to use that as my border, the stitched border circle die here. I thought that was just perfect, that blend of browns and slightly grays um, to create that uh, border for our better pressed circle gradient. Next, I'm going to take the, um, oh golly, set sail die set, and I'm going to assemble these different pieces to create a wave and a sailboat. Now, I actually have the same footage in the previous Fair Winds collection uh, video. However, if you didn't see that one, here it is again. I'm assembling the wave and the um, sailboat here. I had used some ink blended or ink smushed cardstock to create that wave and it looks like it was uh, spritzed with some distress mica stain spray too. I'm showing you that on this die it does have some embossing to help you figure out where the white caps go but they do fit on there quite easily. The dies do cut out, um, I think there's three different dies here, one that cuts the sails, one that cuts the background that I die cut in white here and another die that cuts the hull the um oh is the hull separate yep maybe four different dies the hull the um detail trim at the top of the hull and then this cabin now I do make several boats with just the hull and this top trim piece and those are more like a, a traditional fishing boat for here in Minnesota on lakes not oceans <laughs> and Lake Superior is in Minnesota but it's an in it's more like an inland ocean or inland sea in its size and depth and behavior even though it is freshwater not saltwater so you do, do need a bigger boat on those bigger waters. They just have a whole lot more, um, a whole lot more uh, roughness to the, the water and a small boat isn't all that safe, especially if you go very far from the shore. I'm adding the sails here and I did assemble them incorrectly. They do need the very angled 
not the curved. The very angled sail needs to be down on that white crossbar there. But c'est la vie. It, it still looks cute. Next, we're going to use the guiding light. And in this particular one, I'm going to focus on the rocks. I had a piece of gray cardstock that I took part of that gray cardstock and ink blended over the top of it with some hickory smoke distress oxide ink to make it just a little darker. And then on a then I cut the background from the lighter cardstock and the detail piece from the darker cardstock. You could, of course, reverse that. Either way, it works beautifully. And I layer these up to create these beautiful large rocks. Those could be big boulders, it could be islands, just depends on the perspective you're using. Next, I'm using at antique linen and brushed corduroy, and we're going to do an entire half sheet of cardstock here going to ink blend with some of the antique linen more midway through the cardstock. Just doing a nice layer over the lower two thirds of the cardstock. And then I'm going to come in with the brushed corduroy from the bottom of the cardstock. And we're just going to get those nicely blended. These are very well seasoned ink blending sponges. Um, I've, I've had them for two or three years now, the same sponges, at least, at least that long. And I'm just now having to start to replace a few of them. These are some of the originals. Next, we're going to spritz with the distressed, uh, mica stain spray in unraveled which is this nice um, it's very close to the antique linen color it's a nice uh, brown light light tan color creamy color and I love how it just creates that nice spray of shimmer and detail on this cardstock again this is just 80 pound white cardstock nothing special here I'm drying it with my heat tool because I'm not patient. <laughs> and uh, it does warp quite a bit, but that's okay. It's going to be embossed, dry embossed, and that will help with some of that warping. We're going to take the Castaway 3D embossing folder. This came out last year with Don Walshlegel's collection, which was also um, ocean themed. I'm going to first cut it down with the 5x7 matting dies. Uh, I think I took the largest from the A or th either the A or the B. It must be the B because it's just a little smaller than five by seven. It's a little bigger than five and then four and three quarters and six and three quarters. I did add some extra cardstock behind this to add some extra depth and to help with any residual warping. There really wasn't much though. I love this beautiful 3D net embossing here. I think it's the perfect backdrop for this. Uh, it's almost like a porthole. That's that's the vibe it's giving to me, the porthole type of imagery here. We'll add our elements that we've created previously. Just centering those up nicely on our uh, circle image here, trying to get my placement just right. I kind of want those lines just a little bit not quite straight across a little bit not level to add a little more motion to the card without having there be any motion on the card no moving pieces on the card I'm placing this deciding where I want the rocks to be I want them to anchor this circle to the card just carefully adjusting things to about where I want them and then I'm going to add two extra pieces of scrap cardstock behind the top of the circle element to make sure that it's nice and level as it rests on top of these rocks once we adhere them to the card front. Now I did make that piece a little higher than I had um, originally placed down and I actually quite like where it ended up landing. It almost looks like those waves are bouncing up off of the rocks to the left side of the card. Carefully getting that placed. And then we'll put a heavyweight block on top of that. And while that's drying, we're going to use the Fair Winds Sentiments. And I'm going to take this leftover scrap of cardstock and we're using Pinecone VersaFine Claire ink. 
and I'm stamping that on the lighter side of that ink blended cardstock. I do like that it's still got some of the speckles and ink blending on it. It's really going to help it tie into the background. I stamped it twice with the VersaFine Claire um, Pinecone ink, which is that nice slightly reddish brown. It just was the best brown to go with the rest of the card. I'm going to heat set that with some clear embossing powder, which is another reason to use the VersaFine Claire ink. It's a pigment ink and it creates a nice sharp stamping, very nice clear inking there. And we have a coordinating die to die cut this sentiment and I will die cut several extra copies of this die so that um, I can layer it up behind or on top of that circle on the front of the card there are oh gosh one two three four five layers of cardstock behind that circle that this is going to have to overlay and I may not have cut enough. As I look at this, it probably could have used one more layer of cardstock on the left side of the sentiment, but I could be just being really picky. <laughs> I do add one extra layer behind the part that's going to overlap the circle itself, just for a little extra height and stability. And then I think four layers underneath the background piece or the piece that's hanging over onto the main part of the cardstock. As you can see, I lined it up on the card where I thought I needed it. And I had that stack of extra layers in my hand and trimmed it off where I thought I needed it to be able to just snuggle up against that circle when we do finally adhere it to the card front. You can see that this is very thick um, and will have some good stability on the card front. And I was not perfect in getting my extra pieces lined up behind them, but since they're white, they pretty much blend in. Next, we have these gorgeous rhinestones in smoky topaz, peridot, capri, graphite, and peach something. Um, gorgeous colors. Uh, there are several new colors added to the Spellbinders uh, Color Essential Gems line. And I'm deciding between this peach one and the graphite on this card. Either would work. I decided to go with the peach because um, I thought it went nicely with the browns of the background. So I'm just going to add several of these gems scattered across the card for some extra pizzazz. I think that really does bring, elevate the card. I love a little extra sparkle and shine and they really draw your eye across the front of the card. Next, we're going to use the A Little Hello Sentiment Stamp and Die Set. This is another of the components of the Lisa Horton collection, Spotlight Collection. This is one stamp that stamps all of these sentiments at once. I'm using some VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink, and I'm going to stamp it twice because I like to. <laughs> and then we're going to use some clear embossing ink to seal that ink in and to create a nice raised shiny sentiment. I do love a raised shiny sentiment. I think it stands out and it looks very professional. Very, yes, I love it. It's extra. <laughs> and just going to get that nice and heated and shiny. Then there is one die that die cuts all of these sentiments at once. That is one of my favorite developments with uh, stamping and paper crafting in the last couple of years because it really, it's so much easier to line up several sentiments at once. And it's so convenient to have all of those sentiments ready to go. And you don't have to stamp, heat emboss, and die cut. Again, they're just waiting for you to be ready to use. We're going to take the two smallest layers of the Hello die. And I'm going to cut the fine detail portion from the dark brown and the uh, shadow layer from the lighter brown of the ink blended and distressed mica stain spritzed cardstocks. And this will help coordinate with the in sorry, the inside of the card with the outside of the card. Here I'm comparing which uh, color I like the shadow 
best on. I thought straight up white or this ink blended. And I did ultimately go with the ink blended uh, portion. It wasn't such a stark contrast, especially since we're going to layer it on the inside of the card where the uh, base is already white. This hello is all in one single piece. So you could use this piece independently. You wouldn't have to put the shadow layer on, but I thought I have it. Why not give it a try? Now this layer, the shadow layer does have a fallout piece for the center of the O. And if you went one more size larger with the shadow, that one does not have a shadow for the O, which is really cool. I love that there's three different layers you can use for this uh, main word. I'm just going to adhere that to the inside of the card in the lower right corner. And then I'm going to center the sub sentiment right above the sentiment. I like to flip my piece over and rub from the back so I don't smear any ink or distress mica stain anywhere else. Okay, on to card number two. We're going to do some ink uh, smushing here with weathered wood and what's that other one? Speckled egg, that's right. So I'm going to smush this directly on my uh, workspace here and I'm going to use some water and a paintbrush to kind of get that moving and create a nice smooshy background. I have a half sheet of cardstock here, just plain white 80 pound cardstock. And I'm repeatedly picking up the ink off of my work surface. I will, once I have as much of this ink as I can picked up and covering the cardstock, take my heat tool and dry this. Once you've dried it, you can layer more on top of it. It will it can be reactivated with the water, but if you dry it, you can layer over the top of it, which is what makes ink smushing so magical. Just going to get that nice and dry, or at least dry enough. I'm going to take my ink pads again and smush them on the cardstock. This is the Distress Oxide versions of these colors, which is a uh, pigment and dye together. And this is what makes it able to layer so beautifully. Now you can do distress inks and distress oxides layered together. That does work also. I'm trying to get as much of that ink picked up and as much of the cardstock covered as I can. I'm going to come back and after I dried this again, spatter it with some clean, clear water to add a little more reactiveness to that cardstock. I'm going to take one of the dies from the 5x7 matting layering sets. We're going to die cut this piece of cardstock and then run it through the summertime waves embossing folder of the month from June. I'm going to use some pearl luster gilding polish to highlight that em those embossed waves. And someone had asked me if they need to clean their sponge on the gilding polish and um, because theirs was hard on the out, outside. And mine is also, as you can see, it's it still has some uh, squishiness, but it's all behind this hard, shiny area where it picks up the gilding polish. And that's okay, it works great. I never wash those applicators. We're also going to take a piece of white cardstock and we're going to spritz it with some of this Phantom Mist Distress Distress Mica Stain Spray. It is um, kind of a light steely blue. It kind of matches the um, weathered wood. And we're going to take an Essential Hexi Gems. We're going to die cut the spritzed and some brushed silver. I lay this on the main piece for the 5x7 card I'm creating. And it, it's, it's pretty busy. I tr I'm trying to do a little ink blending with some speckled egg here to try to tone that down a little bit. So every piece is well defined on this, but it's still pretty busy. It's going to get changed up. Next, we have the Set Sail die set. And I'm going to take the uh, die that cuts the hull of the boat and the die that cuts the cabin and the detailed edge of the hull. I die cut some brushed silver cardstock with the for the decorative edge of the hull or the lip of the hull. <clears throat> and I used some of the um, 
ink blended or ink smushed background to create the hulls of the boat because I had some leftover of that. Next, I took one of my older background stamps from Hero Arts. This is the fishing pattern bold prints. I don't remember how long ago this came out. It was a long time ago. It's a bunch, bunch of fishing lures and I'm using some uh, Versifying Claire. No, this is Versamark ink, just watermark and embossing ink. Whatever brand you have will work the same. And I am using a white hexi gem die cut. And then I will do some embossing with one of my all-time favorite embossing powders. This is the White Satin Pearl. I have done this technique over and over. I create this very subtle background with heat embossing in White Satin Pearl on white cardstock. And it really just adds that perfect texture and breakup of pattern on your backgrounds when you want white space, but you don't want it all white. You want a little extra interest. You can use this or do this same technique with any of your background stamps that or individual stamps that you stamp repeatedly to get a pattern that coordinates with the rest of your uh, project. You could do this with word die, word, word um, stamps. That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> word stamps, um, image stamps, whatever you would, you would like to do. I did look for that fishing pattern bold prints stamp on some of the big box or the bigger uh, websites, and I have not found it. It is a, a retired. I'm sorry. Maybe you have it in your stash. Uh, it's a great, it, when you find masculine stuff or nature themed stuff, it's it, go ahead and snap that up because unlike flowers, this stuff is not as common and it generally disappears pretty fast because, you know, we all love it. <laughs> I'm taking that white piece that we embossed because that is what's really shining the best on the front of my card. I used my T-square ruler since I had that nice flat edge to make sure it's nice and straight on my card. And then I'm taking these three hulls that I created, three little fishing boats that I created, add an extra layer of cardstock behind them and laying those out. And then I'm going to take a sentiment from the Fair Winds Sentiments, use some Versafine, or sorry, Versamark ink on some white cardstock with the Happy Father's Day sentiment. I'm going to stamp that a couple times to get some good inking here. I, Since I can't see the Versamark ink on the cardstock very well, I tend to always double stamp it, even if I am have a fresh, freshly re-inked uh, ink pad. I'm using some silver embossing powder. You know, this stuff doesn't go bad. I've had this in my stash for a long time. And in fact, I think I got this particular embossing powder secondhand when I first started stamping, which was like 20 years ago. So it was secondhand then. So you know, it's been around a while and it's a nice shiny silver and there's lots in that container. I encourage you to use what you have in your stash. You do not always have to buy new stuff. Um, and I'm using some of my older things here uh, and um, enjoying it immensely. <laughs> there's a reason you purchased those items in the past. Make sure you get lots of use out of all of your goodies and don't feel like you have to use only the newest and um, most promoted at the moment. I am centering my Happy Father's Day in the center of the top of this hexi gem and I am going to adhere these little boats, these fishing boats, this little fleet of fishing boats onto this hexi gem. This gives a very stormy morning overcast day type of vibe and sometimes those are the best fishing days. It's not the funnest to be sitting in your fishing boat then but it is a, a nice nice uh, way to start your day sometimes. It's not too hot, that's for sure. Well, generally speaking. Now I'm going to take that piece that I had originally decided I was, or originally thought I was going to use on the front of the card. And I'm going to stamp my sentiment on this. It says, nothing makes me happier than the time we spend together. Relax and enjoy. Because uh, Father's Day is definitely during fishing weather here in Minnesota. Um, lots of fellas go fishing on Father's Day with their fathers. Uh, well, girls too. Ladies do also go fishing. <laughs> um, I do 
have some extra cardstock on the back of that because I was going to put it on the front of the card, but it fits nicely inside the card. We're going to use some graphite color essential gems. These are some of the new colors that just came out this month. As you can see, it's a fresh container or fresh package, and we'll use several of these. And don't let anybody tell you that guys don't like shiny because just look at their um, their toys. They often have a iridescent or pearl quality to the paint jobs. They have the shiny chrome. They like shiny too. Don't let guys tell you they don't like or that glitter and shine and rhinestones. That's not just girly. They enjoy it too. <laughs> I think that's a perfect detail to the front of the card. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed creating these cards. It was a fun journey to just experiment and play. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up, this video a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, now's a great time to do that. If you're interested in any of the products I use today, as always, they are listed and linked in the description below. They also, uh, there's also a full link list or a full list link for you and leave me a comment. Let me know what you liked about this video. Until next time, here are a couple more videos I thought you might enjoy. Bye-bye.